this is Sea Otter Europe, Spain's biggest bike show. So let's go and find some cool bike tech. We'll kick off with something new from Ceramic Speed. And while our eyes initially wandered towards this baby blue version of the current RSVW, we soon spotted what appears to be an unreleased prototype RSVW with solid jockey wheels. What benefits could this bring? Well, Ceramic Speed predictably answered no comment, but that won't stop us from speculating. Our first idea was that perhaps the solid jockey wheels could marginally improve aerodynamics, but given that the ISPW Aero already exists and is unlikely to be due an update, we quickly discounted this idea. It seems far more likely that the solid wheels being designed for mud clearance, something that was all but confirmed when we spotted one on the bike of Hans Becking. He's a marathon mountain biker. Given the quality of the finish and the fact we spotted it being used out in the field, we reckon it won't be long before there's an official release of this mysterious rear mech bling. If the solid jockey wheels are indeed for mud clearance, then we can expect to see the system being used during the upcoming cyclocross season. We're at the Shimano stand and there's obviously lots of Shimano equipped bikes. All their cranks do appear to be in one piece still, um, but we're most interested in all the shoes. You've obviously got all the mountain bike shoes, the RX-8 is and sixes are like their gravel shoes. And then the road shoes, you've got the RC9s, s wires at the top. And then it goes down, you've got the RC7s, RC5s, and then the RC3s. Now the RC3s have an RRP of about 100 quid. You can pick these up for about 40 quid from treads and stuff. And they look really neat. Like that is a good looking road shoe. Well, we haven't got very far and already we've got a contender for the loudest paint job at the show on this BH. Now, you want to come and grab a closer look at this. It's got quite some detail. Now, we're at the Camelback stand. I bet you didn't know what the inside of one of their insulated bottles looked like. I certainly didn't. And apparently, that's going to keep your water cool for ages. We're at the Scott stand and there is a lot of foils. This one is a pro bike. It belongs to Q36.5 team who uh, have done plenty of the big races this year. You can tell it's a pro bike because Whereas the Syncross seat post on the ones you can buy have a little uh, removable section for, well, it's comfort, it's got a bit of a damper in it, or you can put a rear light on the clip. Uh, this one obviously doesn't. It's also got 54 tooth SRAM rings on it. Now they're pretty sizable. Uh, Zip 353 wheels to keep the weight down. Let us know what you think of this paint job in the comments section below. This is the Scott Addict Gravel uh, RC. So it's the top of the range one. Um, again, a very cool paint job. And you might have noticed that the fulcrum uh, with cult fairings, the rapid red carbon wheels uh, have matching graphics. It's a very nice matchy bike. Uh, it's got the Syncross integrated bar and stem. I'm not too sure about integrated stems on, on gravel bikes, but it does look good. Another Scott Addict Gravel, of course, this one's absolutely covered in bags. Syncross is Scott's in-house components, bag sort of brand. Uh, a few other interesting bits on this bike. Got this all black YBN chain. I'm not sure about all black chains. What do you reckon? And uh, a cycling ceramic overspeed, oversized pulley wheel system down there. Now, if you're going bike packing, you could take an entire house with you on this. Looks like we've got another special paint job up here. Another Scott foil. It's got a very nice green metallic there. And this is the, the rear light that we were talking about a minute ago. Integrated into the seat post, very nice. An aero rear light. Also, get a closer look at these wheels. So the spokes are carbon, that's nothing too new, but they are they're in, an integral part of the wheel. They're built into the rim and the hub. Um, Syncross say that this increases the stiffness of them. Obviously, if you crash, then it's, it's less fun because you break a spoke, you write off your entire wheel. You win some, you lose some. We've made our way over to MMR Bikes. You might not have heard of these in the UK, but you might have seen them at the Vuelta Espana this year. And we're told that bikes like this Adrenaline SL10, which the team used in the Vuelta, are coming to the UK in the first quarter next year. So keep your eyes peeled. They're really quite, well, we obviously don't have a UK pricing, but at under 6,000 euros, this is gonna be a hell of a lot cheaper than your specialized treks and canyons of the world. So uh, yeah, keep your eyes peeled for these. It's got, got quite classic lines, but then integrated front end. There's not just one bike though, there's also an aero bike over here and some gravel bikes as well. This one in sand and mud color. 
it's very nice. Now, I just know that these Chanelis are going to be a lot of people's favorite bikes of the show. I know that Liam behind the camera, he's a fan. Uh, this is the Nemo TIG Gravel. Uh, this is the updated version, so there's been some changes around this seat post area. Uh, and it's now got suspension. Uh, so it's got this, uh, what do you call one of them? High ride fork, one of them. Obviously, it's also pink as well, <laughs> which uh, you might like or you might not like. <laughs> Chanelli also winning the prize for the most flair on a set of bars. That is, that's absolutely ridiculous. Well, we were about to leave the Chanelli stand and then uh, spotted this. Um, I have no idea what it's for, um, but it looks cool. Um, just, yeah. Our Gobik are obviously suppliers of Movistar's team kit. Um, I think that their winters might be a bit better than ours over in Spain because I don't know how white those sleeves are going to stay in a UK winter. Cool kit though, and look at these reflective strips around the legs. I like them. Moustache bikes, uh, they make loads of loads of e-bikes. Uh, this one's got a pretty interesting uh, paint scheme. Lots of French words on it. Um, I also learnt, this is the speed sensor, so the, the system knows uh, your wheel speed, so it can uh, apply that assist. Um, I didn't know what that was initially, so there we go. I learn something new every day. We're at the Cervelo stand. Some of you might remember our video on the uh, on the Soloist. That's kind of Cervelo's do-it-all bike. And a lot of you asked, but why has it still got the race geometry of the Cervelo S5? Well, it's because it's meant to be a race bike. Uh, if you don't want racy geometry, then probably go for the Caledonia 5 if you want a Cervelo. Um, I think that this is one of the best looking endurance bikes on the market. Just look at that. That's a really tidy looking bike. Obviously, if you then want even bigger tyre clearances, then the Aspiro is going to be the one to go for. How about this rose gold paint job? You've all seen the classified system before. We've uh, done it to death on the Road CC website and YouTube channel. But I'm really liking the look of this Cervelo S5 with a big single front chainring. I just think it looks really cool. We're at the BMC stand and uh, we've located the new TT bike that has been designed in conjunction with Red Bull F1 team, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, obviously, this is not UCI legal, so this will be used for uh, Ironmans and, and triathlons and stuff like that. So it's got the integrated storage. Um, more and more TT bikes are trying to like fill up this, this triangle in the middle because it's more aero. And then you've got the hose going up to the mouthpiece up there so you can drink while still in that aero position. Uh, we've got a few more, lots of aero touches. So integrated rear light, uh, which is useful for your local Club 10 where you have to use a rear light. Uh, obviously 858 zip wheels, and um, they're the, the deepest non-disc wheels in their range. Um, I've also liked like this, little, this little bit around here. And on the other side, it sort of, um, the, the, brake, the brake caliper is kind of recessed into the fork, no doubt, for aero as well. And the other interesting thing, under here is like a fin. I have no idea what that's for. <laughs> but apparently it makes it quick. And then got the forks, they're obviously really quite wide. Now that's a trend we've seen, not just on TT bikes, but road bikes, and of course, all the track bikes as well. And they're getting wider because, not because they're more aerodynamic by themselves, but because when it's got a rider on it, these wide forks are gonna deflect the air around your legs, which your legs are slow. It makes a load of turbulent air, and the more the air can avoid, your, avoid that turbulence, then the less drag you're gonna experience. So that's why forks are getting wider and wider. There is loads of titanium bikes at the show as well, including ones for your kids. Check out these Green Rock titanium kids bikes and balance bikes. This one even has little baby carbon rims. How about that? We've come all the way to Girona and uh, this bike's followed us across from Bonoldswick. That's where uh, the Lotus Hope track bikes are made. Uh, this one has a little Tokyo 2020 crest. Of course, the Team GB are still using the Lotus Hope track bike on the track. Look at the size of this chainring. It's absolutely insane. And another thing that separates track and road bikes is the the width of the chains like that is a serious heavy duty 
chain. It looks like it's off a motocross bike rather than a rather than a push bike. Um, the saddle is also quite interesting. It's just screwed down, and obviously there's no padding. Comfort is a is a secondary matter when it comes to maximum speed on the track. So Lumos helmets, um, as the name suggests, have lights in. So you've got it's actually quite subtle on the front. Uh, so this bit lights up, and then on the rear as well. Uh, there you go. This one lights up. Um, also indicators. So this little button will go on your bars. Um, it's also compatible with Apple Watches. Um, do you reckon that improves your safety? Let us know down in the comments below. Hutchison ties are here. This one's the Challenger. Um, it's a favorite among quite a lot of ultra endurance cyclists. Um, I used a set of these last winter and was very impressed. In fact, they made it into our six of the best winter tires. Um, the one downside was that there wasn't a tubeless version. Well. Now there is. Nope, not that one. That one's tube type. This one, tubeless ready. Uh, these have a claimed life of 10,000K, which that's a lot more than most tires. We're at the POC stand. Uh, they've got some pretty funky helmets. Uh, this is a gravel helmet. Uh, everything's going gravel, obviously. Uh, it's got a cool paint job, and then you can store little things. I don't know what you're meant to store there but uh, and a Velcro strip on this side. And then underneath, we've got the, got the commuter helmets, which have a fabric top. Uh, it's kind of aerated to let some of, your, some of your hot air out your head. But uh, yeah, what do you reckon about them? So we're over at the Basso stand and we've spotted this Alpha Tauri limited edition Basso. Uh, so uh, there's a partnership between Basso and Alpha Tauri. So the riders, Yuki Snowda, got one of these. Um, not in this size. This is way too big for him. We've seen lots of partnerships between F1 teams and, and bike brands. Obviously, F1 teams know lots about how air works. Uh, so it's not just exclusively the riders that are on, on Basso bikes. So the rest of the team are on the Volta e-bikes for getting themselves around the paddock. And then also, the Palter, which is a gravel bike. Now, this one is rather special, so let's go and have a look at that. This one, obviously, has World Cup stripes on it. Um, Basso is an official partner of the World Champs in 2023 because it's, its new location, there's a long story about that, the new location of Gravel World Champs is about 10k away from the Basso factory. So, uh, this is a Palter, specially painted to commemorate that. Um, I do like this, uh, this marble effect. <laughs> and, uh, this, this marble effect here looks like scratches, so if anyone falls off of one, then uh, <laughs> it's not going to matter. Felt are also in the game for the loudest paint jobs on their uh, VR and their FR. Uh, you've probably all seen by now the, uh, the rainbow SRAM red equipment, uh, so flat top chain and cassette. That was launched at the same time as SRAM Force last year. Um, I think it looks quite good, but is it too flash? Of course, big bit of the show is e-bikes. E-bike sales made up over 25% of all bike sales in the UK last year. So let's go and see which cool ones we can find. Have you ever wanted an e-bike that looks like a motorbike? Well, if you do, then Gas Gas have got your back with uh, this Moto One e-bike. Um, it's got the Fang Hub motor in it. Uh, it's got very fat tyres for comfort, apparently, and uh, 20 inch wheels. What do you reckon? This one might win the prize as the coolest looking e-bike. It's, uh, it's obviously got a little hub motor down here. Uh, belt drive so that you don't get your trousers grubby on your commute. Um, small enough that it's not going to take up very much room on a train. And uh, it's got cantilever brakes. People, well, people, some people in the comments hate disc brakes. so. What do you reckon about these county brakes? There is also lots of brands that you won't have seen before in the UK. So this one is a Unica, and uh, Sisland make is their in-house brand making all the components, so the flat bars. Now this might just be the ultimate commuter. Uh, a, look at those wheels. B, one by GRX group set. Uh, this, it's a mullet setup, so you get a lot of range. So that's a mountain bike set, an XT Diora rear mech. Um, that bit is 3D printed, don't know what it's for. 
um, I will ask and try and find out. Um, it's got the, uh, that's the, who makes that? They use it on the Canyon, the Canyon Endurance as well. But I can't remember who makes that seat post, but we have reviewed it on the Road CC website. We'll put a link down in the description because they're very comfy and it's quite a cheap way of adding a bit of rear compliance to your bike. We're at the Decathlon stand and this is the Van Riesel RCR. So the RCR is short for racer. Uh, this model is the only one available in the UK at the moment, but we're promised that more are coming. For example, I've seen this morning, there's an RCR Pro, I believe it's called, with uh, SRAM Red and Zip 454 NSWs. Uh, but yeah, anyway, this is the one model that I can see on their website at the moment for the UK. It's 4,749 euros. That's 2K cheaper than most other brands are offering. Now, Decathlon is obviously a, a huge entity, and I'm guessing just because they make, can make and sell so many bikes, they can bring that price down. So that's good for the consumer. Uh, this is like an all-rounder bike, so combining aero and lightweight, um, SRAM Force group set on this one, Zip 404 wheels. And rumor has it, Van Riesel will be sponsoring AG2R Citroen next year in the Grand Tour. So we'll wait and see whether it's this bike or another bike. So we're over at Daramo. Uh, you, might have, you might have heard of them before. They make some super lightweight components like seat posts and handlebars and stuff. They've got a whole selection of gravel bikes, mountain bikes and road bikes. This is the new Specialized Tarmac SL8. We've covered it lots on, on Road CC. Uh, they obviously make a very lightweight seat post and with SRAM Force this build is 6.9 kilos which is obviously pretty light. Most interesting thing is this integrated cockpit it's all new from Daramo uh, you can get it in a whole range of widths uh, zero degree flare six degree flare four different finishes loads of different widths lengths everything uh, they are pretty good at making carbon fiber parts so we've also got these prototype cranks. Uh, these are rumored to weigh around 300 grams. They have an aluminum axle. Uh, so this set have a 30 mil axle. Apparently they will also be available with a 29 millimeter axle for, for dub. Um, so yeah, I think we'll be seeing these on a fair few hill climbers bikes and they certainly look the part. Well, that's the otter done. Uh, I'm going to go and sit down for a long while. Uh, let us know which your favorite bit of bike tech was down in the comment section below. If you like this kind of content, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for lots more bike tech. We'll see you next time.